What's up, guys? It's a very important day today. Oh, boy. We got a lot. A lot of little fun fun little treats yes. today. <laughs> um, if you're not from America... Sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> actually, honestly, better off. Bro, um, today, yeah. Today... Rest of, the, rest of the year, we're sorry you're not from here. Today... today yeah, for, for us it's election day. Uh, it's happening right now. Yeah, and a lot of people, myself included, have been doom scrolling all day. Not good. Haven't gotten a yeah. lot of work done today. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to avoid it as much as possible, but it's just so addictive. It hasn't been working for me. No. I've been trying in the past like hour. I've tried to avoid it. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, we're here to help you doom scroll. Yeah. Uh, we are doing our own. Yeah. Election <laughs> today. Uh. Now. If you're watching this show after it's been live, mm -hmm. uh, the title and thumbnail are going to be something about PlayStation 5 Pro because mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about the week's news. A lot of stuff about the PlayStation 5 Pro came out in the past couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be what the title looks like. But right now, if you're watching this live, we're doing a poll from the people live in the chat. They're going to vote. We're doing a, a bracket-style voting yes. on what game character would be a good president. Yeah. Now, I pulled a list of characters from BAFTA's 20 Most Iconic Video Game Characters, and this list is horrible. Yeah, there's a lot of recency bias in there. Um, there's a lot of characters that I just don't feel like are as iconic as some other characters. So we made some edits to ourselves. Yeah, uh, why is... Shadow Heart from Baldur's Gate 3. Shadow Heart, and there's another Baldur's Gate 3 character, Asterian, is as, on there. As the most iconic as video more, game characters yeah, is, of all Shadow time. Shadow Heart is not more <laughs> iconic than Pikachu and Solid Snake. Or even Charizard, who's not on the list. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of characters that are not on this yeah, list. Yeah, that's that the recency bias. We added some stuff. Like Mega Man's not on the list. Yeah, Mega Man's not on the list. Spyro's not on the list. You know, yeah. Sam Fisher wasn't on the list. So whatever uh way cat in the youtube chat oh no the twitch chat says bob who do you hope wins i hope my man mario wins yes i'm really pulling out <laughs> for the guy i don't align with him on all of the issues mm -hmm. like for example he's a little too pro israel but <laughs> i think that his other issues come out on right top, I, you know? I understand yeah yeah so, anyway uh we'll start one right now uh, yeah. We're doing first one up is Crash versus Steve. Crash versus Steve. Crash versus Steve. Okay. That's the first one. This is just random seating. Yes. Okay. So I'm sure you can go to their websites and look up their uh, yeah, positions on certain see what topics. And what they believe in <laughs> in terms of. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Which one do you think would make a better president? The know, fucking man. psychopath wombat? <laughs> Or the guy who doesn't talk, who's going to be played by Jack Black. Well, Steve, Steve is a, a man of the land. You know, he's like, you know, he builds his own property. He, he knows how to, like, you know, start from nothing and come up. And Crash Bandicoot, to me, just seems very reckless. You know, yeah. he's very, like, but haphazard. Hey, people like that. Yeah, people, people want like somebody him. in there who will shake things up. Yeah. You know? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. While that's going on, that's both on the YouTube and the Twitch chat, and uh, we'll just we'll I guess take an average. I yeah. have a feeling they're both going to be pretty much the same. Uh, while that's happening, we got a bunch of messages from Majin Jameson with the thirty months. We got Will Wolf, damn it, with the fifty-four months, who says, "Hey, Wolf Bros, I don't want to get too political on election night, but I can't stay silent on this issue. I just do not accept the fact that there are people in this country that think Agatha All Along is a better show than The Penguin. What is wrong with people?" Like, seriously, what is wrong with people? Agatha All Along is a fine show. It's an okay show. It's probably one of the better Marvel shows that's come out recently. But if you're going to sit here and tell me that Agatha All Along is a seriously a better show than The Penguin, I don't want to know you. I don't want you in my life. The Penguin <laughs> should win every Emmy, and Kristen Milioti should be in everything as Sofia Gigante. I hope she survives so she is in Batman 2, and I hope that Todd McFarlane makes an action figure of her. In fact, all the action figures of her, I want every outfit that she wears in the show. What uh, episode of The Penguin are we on? Seven. Next week is the eighth and final episode. Okay. I so, haven't watched a single thing. You really need to. Do I need to watch it? Should I watch that first or, or finish watching Dan to Dan? 
No, let's just start the penguin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got Baron Bloomington with 11 months. Thank you. We got Kira with 1,000 bits. Happy 200th episode. Oh, yeah, it's our 200th Yeah, it's episode. a 200th episode. Yeah, it's a yeah. yeah, No cake. May, May Peco Peco. Thank you for the 15 months. And Anthony Mule, thanks for the 100 bits. Hey, Wolf Bros, I'm voting Zim for president. Don't. His issues, his, his policies yeah, are he, absolutely you'd be garbage. shockingly surprised. Yeah, he is. I know where he was on January 6th, and yeah. I'm very disappointed. Yes, me. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> um, oh, and we got $10 from Farmer Gooch. Before we even yeah. went live, <laughs> this man's on top yeah, of Yeah, that's, that's, that's a man. I would vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh... While this poll's running, mm-hmm. uh, I'm only going to do the polls for like a few minutes. Um, while the poll's running, let's get right into the... I guess we should... Before we get into the PlayStation 5 stuff, let's talk about the PlayStation Plus. Yes, it's the first uh, Tuesday of November, which means you need to get out and vote. Uh, but also, it means uh, that you get free games if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus. Uh, I don't know why they're leading with this one, but um, for PS4 and PS5, you get Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharge. Yeah, that's the big one that they're promoting right now. Uh, the next game for PS5 only is Ghostwire Tokyo. And then okay. lastly, uh, for PS4 and PS5 is Death Note Killer Within. I didn't even know there was a Death Note game. Me neither. So Ghostwire looks really cool. I have a code for it. Like, I have it on Steam, I think, yeah. and I just never played it. <laughs> I've heard good things about it. Um, this was a big uh, PS5 exclusive. This is a Bethesda game that was announced as an exclusive before Microsoft bought Bethesda. Maybe okay. that's why it's not the lead game. It's like a fuck you to Microsoft. Oh, that yeah. makes... Okay, maybe. Maybe. That's weird. That's yeah. weird that they would even include it in this. Death Note, Killer Within. I don't know anything about this game. Me neither. It looks like a... Maybe like a... What would you call it? It looks like they're moving chess pieces. Yeah. I don't know. I'll have to... Uh, yeah, it looks like a strategy type okay. game or something. That's very strange. Very strange. Uh, okay. I, I I guess there's only one that I think would be interesting here. That's that, uh, uh, Ghostwire. Yeah, I mean, I think the Hot Wheels game was good. I remember there was like one Hot Wheels game that came out not so long ago that was like... People really were really excited about. It. I don't know if it's this one. There I don't was think it's this one. DLC for Forza. Yes, but I, I think it was a cool. standalone Hot Wheels game. Breaking news, Will. This just in: the results are in for Crash versus Steve, and oh it boy. is a fifty-fifty on Twitch. <laughs> but on YouTube, we got the tiebreaker: Crash Bandicoot, sixty-four percent. Okay, so Crash Bandicoot uh, is the winner here. All right, so there you go. Is he even from this country? What country are bandicoots from? No, but you know it doesn't matter where you were born anymore. You could uh, the rules don't matter. That's true. Rules don't matter anymore. That's true. <laughs> um. Okay. I don't know why this this bracket does it like this. It like see the first one was like I I guess oh because it's an odd number. Okay. So I guess we're doing Crash versus Pikachu. Okay. <laughs> Crash is immediately uh I guess he he counted as part of the losers bracket. Yeah. Uh so while I set that up, uh why don't you get into the next article? All right. So the next article, um what do we want to start with? Okay, yes. So the PS5 Pro is coming out this week, I think. Yeah, uh 15th. 15th. Yes. No, is that so this week? Next week. Next week. We're already starting to see No, November 7th. PS5 Pro launches on November 7th. I makes- I am getting one. Yes. So you must be getting it later. I'll be I'll be mad. Cause I know I I watched Kevin Kenson's unboxing of it. I know people are starting to like get it and like unbox it, but like can't really unbox it. Arriving got, Monday. Like- That's the eleventh. Yes. Okay, I can live with getting it on the eleventh. Okay. All right. So it's coming November seventh. So okay. it's in two days. Uh, and we're starting to get some more information about it. Specifically, um, now we ha- not only have the specs, but what games will be PS5 Pro enhanced when it launches. Ahead of the PS5 Pro launch later this week, 
Uh, the Verge has confirmation of a few more official specifications for the most powerful version of the PlayStation 5. Digital Foundry has shared details from the manual included with the PS5 Pro review unit, confirming that the console is powered by an AMD Ryzen Zen 2 8-core 16-thread processor with an RDNA-based graphics engine producing 16.7 teraflops of GPU compute performance compared to the base PS5's 10.23 teraflops. That's a lot of teraflops. Yes. Uh, as noted in March, initial leak documents showed a much higher figure for the PS5 Pro, mostly due to a change in AMD, AMD's RDNA architecture. Uh, the manual also revealed that in addition to 16 gigs of GDDR4, six memory the ps5 pro will have two gigs of slower ddr5 memory for handling console tasks not related to gaming plus a two terabyte ssd at 390 watts its maximum power drawer will also be more than the 340 watts used by the slim and regular versions of the ps5 digital edition but the console won't be drawing that much power at all times uh, i'm too used to handhelds 390 watts sounds like that's a, a lot yeah that is massive yeah. when you think i about guess it. PCs, you know, can pull a lot. Like gaming PCs could pull mm -hmm. a lot, but they don't pull that much all the time. They yeah. usually pull a lot less than that, even when you're doing like a decent amount of gaming. So, yeah, I would imagine this is going to be drawing significantly less than 390. But, yeah, uh, I'm used to handhelds, which are doing 15, <laughs> yeah, at 20, most 30. Yeah. yeah, so that's uh, that's a lot. That's yeah. insane. Anyway, uh. In a post shared to the official PlayStation blog, Sony also revealed a list of games, uh, 55 games that will be that will have PS5 Pro enhancements uh, when the $700 console launches on November 7th. The list includes several titles already revealed to be updates, but adds several others such as Black Ops 6 and Star Wars Outlaws. Now, does Warzone count? Because I'm going to be getting one. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason I am get I I decided I didn't want to get one. Yes, but I am getting one now. Yes. Because I'm doing a sponsorship with Asus. And they asked, and they asked me to get yeah. the PlayStation 5 Pro. So uh, I guess I might as well do a video if I'm going to be spending yeah. $900 on this fucking thing. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to play. I guess uh, I will. I, I mean, Astrobot. Obviously. But is that even enhanced? Nope. It's not on the list. Uh, Alan Wake 2. Albatross, Apex Legends, Arma Reforged, Mirror, uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Baldur's Gate 3, Black Ops 6, EA Sports College Football, Dead Island 2, Demon Souls, um, Diablo 4, Dragon Age, Dragon's Dogma 2, Dying Light 2, uh, EA Sports FC 25, Enlisted, uh, F124, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Fortnite, God of War Ragnarok, Hogwarts Legacy, Horizon uh, Forbidden West, Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered, uh kayak vr mirage lies of p madden spider-man remastered miles morales spider-man 2 uh naraka nba 2k 25 no man's sky pal world paladin's passage uh planet coaster 2 professional spirits baseball 24 25 ratchet and clank rift apart resident evil 4 resident evil village rise of the ronin rogue flight jedi survivor star wars outlaws stellar blade test drive unlimited solar crown the callisto protocol the crew motor fest the finals the first descent last of us part one last of us part two remastered until dawn war thunder warframe world of warships legends of all of those games i have marvel spider-man 2 <laughs> um and, I mean, I have all, I have some others, but they're for different platforms. Right. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2, though, I have it physical, I think. Okay. And um, I don't think I'm getting the disc drive. Mm. I ordered it, but I think it's on back order. Yeah, I know those have been like sold out and on back order. Yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen. You might have to buy a game. I did. I do have uh, the stand. It came already. That's important. The stand That's came important. already. The stand. Can you please, yes. when you do a rundown of the PS5, can you just do a little segment in the video where it stands without the stand? Oh, sure. Vertically? Sure. Because, like, I'm, like, kind of bothered that they, like, hype it up to like imply that you definitely need the stand to stand it up vertically. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced it'll work on its own without it. 
it's like the regular base PS5. Like you can stand it on its own. It's just it gives additional support if it has right. to stand. But like the PS2, 3, and 4 all also sold a stand and they like the promo pictures all had the stand, but they never made it feel like it's desperately needed to have the thing yeah. standing vertically. Yeah, I mean, I'll show it without it, yeah. but I'm definitely going to want the stand if I'm going right. to verticalize it. Mm -hmm. I'm also a little peeved because my living room, all of the consoles are black, and I, I'm not going to have plates. For this. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, you are a fan of Digital Foundry, right? I yes. Like, I like watching yeah. them. Yeah, I like listening to their podcasts. Yeah. They're, they're very good. They did an unboxing of the, their uh, PlayStation 5. Have you seen it? I have their not seen theirs, Pro. no. Okay. I, this is another thing I have planned for today. Okay. Uh, this is a little, we're going to play a little game. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like, you ever like play one of those games when you're, uh, like trying to finish the lyrics of a song? Yes. We're going to do something similar. You're going to try to guess what the next line is here okay. and on their YouTube video from their unboxing. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll direct your attention. This time. So we're both going to unbox these things at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so d it's twice the excitement. Absolutely. It's kind of like Christmas. <laughs> Kind of. And uh, it's going to be an unboxing of biblical proportions up there with that time where the Nazis. What, what is the next line? Well, open the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, hold on. Hold on a second. Is hold on. Hold on now. You might be onto something. <laughs> Nazis unboxed uh, the Ten Commandments in Raiders of the Lost Ark. This yeah. is this is all right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty good. Because that's pretty good. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, listen, I'm not up on my Nazi unboxing, but oh, as, you're not. Far, as far as okay. I know, I only know of one instance where the Nazis unboxed something, and it didn't end well for them. I was listening to this on another tab <laughs> while I was doing something. <laughs> And he's like, biblical, uh, an unboxing of biblical proportions right. right up there around the time when the Nazis, and I was like, what the fuck is he going to say? <laughs> so wait, does that mean they all exploded and melted at, like, at the end of the video? I, I, I don't or, think they showed that part. Okay, so they probably knew to close their eyes. That's how they protected themselves. Right, yes, okay, yes. exactly. Very cool. Raiders of the Lost Ark, you <laughs> fucking Zoomers. Go watch that movie. And then watch Temple, and then watch Last Crusade, and then you'll be ready for the Great Circle when it comes out. God <laughs> damn it. Now, uh, one of them had the stand in that video. Okay. And <laughs> turns out the stand is a dual stand. It also works for the original PlayStation 5. You mean the... The original PlayStation 5. The fat one? The big one, yeah. It has an extra piece in it that will allow it to work with it. Interesting. Okay, because I know the stand is designed for the Slim and the the Pro, but the, the new stand will also work for the original model? I believe that's what they showed, yeah. Okay. Fascinating. We have it. Yeah. I have it in the garage. Fascinating. Uh, all right. Where, where are we at in the polls today? We okay. got for, on, on Twitch... Pikachu by a landslide. Okay. Not surprised. Him going out and knocking on doors really helped. Yeah. Uh, 73% on Twitch and on YouTube. 70%. 70%. Okay, yeah. I was looking at the old poll. All right. So that's one for Pikachu. And next we go. will do Kratos and Sam Fisher. Okay. Both have... Uh, both are military legends <laughs> both high-ranking officials um one of them loves his daughter the other one killed his son <laughs> i'm just saying just saying. just saying <laughs> um weirdly though in this this is a weird anomaly in this race both republicans running against yeah. each other <laughs> <laughs> uh Okay. Anyway, what's the next topic right. we're doing? We're not done with the PlayStation 5 Pro because PlayStation CEO says that it was a five-year project. Development started before the PS5 launched. What? Sony's co-CEO says development on the PS5 Pro started before the launch of the PS5. Sony's console was released on November 19th, 2020, but according to Sony Interactive Entertainment's platform business group CEO, Hideki uh, Nishino, development on its mid-generation upgrade had already started before then. 
We had Don Pro in the last generation Nishino told Variety. Uh, we learned a lot from there. When we were selling the PS4 Pro, in addition to the PS4, 20% of customers actually got the PS4 Pro. That's good. I don't think we've ever had an actual number on who bought the PS4 Pro. No, the speculated numbers were like insanely low. Yeah. But so, uh, there, we, we knew that there had to be something yeah. because they're doing a mid-cycle uh, iteration again. Yes. So they're doing a pro version again. So yes. there must have been some sort of benefit from the from the last time they yes. did this. Um, so yeah, PS4, just for context, the PS4 sold 113.5 million units. So 20% of that. Oh, because yeah. that's the total number. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it came out later in the life cycle. Yeah. I, and at the tail end of... Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> at the tail end of the life cycle, that's when uh, sales start to get slow. And yeah. we're seeing that with the Switch right now. Yeah. Uh, so having a little added boost, uh, I guess, might be the reason why they're they're doing yeah. the pro version. Yeah. Um, well, he goes on to say it was a high, it was high end, it was premium tier. So there were potential users acquiring those kinds of units. Interestingly enough, it was not just about high, uh, highly engaged users. Actually, new users came to the PlayStation to get the PS4 Pro as well. So we started working on the PS5 Pro even before the PS5 launch. It was another five year project for us. So there was a conversation around whether we wanted to do another Pro or not. But the main thing was there are technologies we can grow up in. There are technologies we can grow up in three years time or five years time. So the innovation and technology advancement is more quicker in a modern world. Phones are updating every year. PCs are updating every year. I don't think we uh, go every year up. We go every year updates, uh, but there are things we can package together to bring the greatest things in the con in the game console segment range. So that's the vision. Nishino added that Sony never releases new hardware without already planning what its successor could end up becoming. Uh, we're kind of happy to see that most engaged gamers, most engaged gaming users are interested in the PS5 Pro. And then I'm pretty sure new users will grab the PS5 Pro as well. He said, uh, if it's the PlayStation you want to get, that's the thing. So that's where we designed the generation at this moment. We designed everything with having one, uh, one ahead in our mind. It's not like we just make up. It's not like we just make the next step, and we don't know about the next two steps ahead. That's not our way of working because we need to make sure that the ten-year-old generation cycle continues to do to be going as well. That's interesting because, uh, again, I kept asking why would they, uh, why would they do this? Why yeah. why are they doing a <laughs> mid-cycle one? It doesn't seem like anybody wants this. I mean, 20% doesn't seem like a lot, so to speak. Um, but I guess I guess it was enough to see value in it. Just like, just try it again. But that said, you know, that was however many years ago. And the market is very different than it was then. The economy is very different than it was then. So I just don't think, you know... The, the pro console has the same market value as the original pro did, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot is very different from the yeah. original. I mean, the numbers are a slight, it seems like a slight spec bump, the old play PlayStation 5 to the new PlayStation 5 yeah. Pro. And there's not, I mean, a 55 upgraded games is a decent amount of upgraded games, I think. I yeah. think that might be more than what were upgraded on the original PlayStation 5. Uh, I mean, the original PlayStation 4. It's very confusing. Everything's around the same name. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I, I'm a little excited to get it in my hands and try it out because I'm very confused about what the actual uh, differences are going to be. I don't yeah. think it's going to be visually different at all, to be completely honest with you, especially on my TV in my living yeah. room where the PlayStation 5 is plugged in. Uh, it's a 4K 60 hertz TV. Yeah. And it's a it's a little bit old by yeah. now and it's a uh, black friday special so it was just like kind of a cheap tv yeah um the best display that i have is my computer monitor mm -hmm. and it's only 32 inches yeah. so I, I i mean this one's 38 i can plug it into that yeah this, this one's 4k 120 hertz i can okay. try that but uh the one that's in the other room mm -hmm. uh 
OLED 4K uh, 240 hertz, which yeah. is a little more than I'm going to need. I don't even think the PlayStation 5 will do that at 1080p. Right. I think it could technically, but I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know what supports it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, Looking at the marketing, it doesn't seem like there's like anything at all that's different. Yeah. I don't, I honestly don't think I'm going to be able to visually see a difference. Even in the video they shot, like the, the announcement video, like the differences between everything was like night and was like, wasn't night and day. Yeah. Like they were still like, everything was very similar or any uh, similar, any differences there were, were negligible. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think they're gonna have a hard time marketing this one, you know. I'm also just generally not a fan of uh, Sony hardware. Mm-hmm. I don't think that they really have any sort of like polish in their like uh, right user experience. Everything's mm-hmm. just like a little like like ham fisted. Yeah. Um. So. When the PlayStation 5 came out, I was like, this thing's not ready for prime time. They got to, like, mm-hmm. bake this in the oven a little bit more. And there will very soon be an iteration. Yeah. And that iteration ended up being the Slim. And I don't think it really changed anything at all. No. As far Maybe as know, some, yeah. like, hardware issues, like yeah. overheating and stuff. But, like, you don't really hear much about hardware issues on the PlayStation yeah. 5. Like, anything, like, breaking, like, the Red Ring of Death or Yeah, anything. no. Um, or Joy-Con drift. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I don't know. I have... I'm... I'm confident that this new one's gonna the hardware is gonna be good but yeah i don't see a reason to spend this much money mm-hmm. uh i don't like the pricing structure they have and i don't think the difference is gonna be anything to write home about yeah but i'm gonna get it and i'm gonna see i'm gonna put the two together mm-hmm. and we will see. all right uh breaking from the polls yes. uh kratos wins in both wow in both places uh now i'm gonna go i'm gonna say this is an upset yeah and i think that this is the zoomers voting because yeah. uh sam fisher hasn't had a good game in a while but That's he sure. has had legendary games yes he used to be the guy the guy yeah so i'm a little upset by this but mm-hmm. kratos uh takes it the next poll is sonic and it was gonna be mario but i decided Ooh. that's too early for sonic yeah. and mario so i'm doing sonic and dr wiley Ah, okay. Interesting. So, uh, go have fun with that. Uh, we did get five dollars too. Oh, we did. Yes. Re- re- Barry re- ten twenty nine. Hopefully, this great podcast will keep us as gamers united, no matter the outcome of tonight. Keep it up, Hat Dad and Long Hair Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I forgot who am I? Doing? Sonic and Sonic Dr. and Doctor Wiley. Oh, you got it. Yes. Uh, Get out and vote. Yes, get out and vote. Especially because one is a convicted felon. So I highly suggest you vote blue. (laughs) Edward Bova. For that, Paul. Thanks for gifting a sub to Spiky Miko. They are stealing the vote from Fisher. (laughs) I think, hey, you know what, though? Maybe they picked right because... (laughs) He Sam Fisher literally storms the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> he literally did in Splinter Cell Conviction, one of the best levels of all time. <laughs> but he does he storm does. the Capitol and he shoots the vice president in the knee twice in both knees. Does it, was it the vice president? I'm pretty sure it was the vice president. I'm gonna have to. Oh man, I'm gonna have to right? go back and play that game right? again. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "This vice president is too pussy to do what he's." <laughs> supposed to do uh see history takes after video games. yes that's true hey you know the president in that game was a woman so it definitely Just was saying. the vice president then <laughs> then it definitely was the vice president he yeah, fucking yeah. Looks, she, he goes you can't touch me i'm bulletproof and then he fucking shoots him with both <laughs> kneecaps and then fucking takes him uh jesus christ oh uh, god i love video games <laughs> i love you uh moving on are we still on playstation 5 yes. yeah this is where i'm most upset yes because i know you said you wanted to get black plates for your playstation 5 yep. pro i sure did say well, that you're gonna have to wait uh because there's a weird wrinkle uncovered by a reddit user who shared in a post that has since gone viral on the playstation subreddit uh the user had some cobalt blue plates um, and decided to try them on the Pro and can confirm that the bottom plates match the slim PlayStation 5 oh. plates. 
Uh, oh. However, the top plates do not match because while they're physically the same size, the teeth that connect to the system are in slightly different places. Uh, while they didn't share oh. an image of the PS5 Pro itself, which isn't supposed to be officially out until November 7th, uh, they did show comparisons of the Pro and the Slim plates. Uh, while the bottom plate fits, you can see where the differences in the uh, plastic locking pieces differ between the two consoles. Uh, Sony made the PS5 Slim and the PS5 Pro plates the exact same size and dimensions, but made uh, but made them different interlocking teeth to intentionally make them not compatible, even though they are the exact same size. Tweeted YouTuber Jake Randall. RIP everyone saying that the only difference uh, was the size of the racing stripe. Uh, responded a commenter. This was posted three weeks ago and everyone was in denial. Uh, the PlayStation community had been debating whether or not the plates would be a match for weeks due to imprecise messaging from the PlayStation blog post revealing the PlayStation 5 Pro, an image showing uh, con an image showing console cover compatibility both seemed to seem like definitive proof the slim covers wouldn't work, but also appeared too ridiculous of a move for everyone to be convinced. Uh, Sony confirmed the veracity of the Reddit post discovery today and that console cover compatibility with the PS5 Pro will be sold eventually, just not in the time for launch. The PS5, cons the PS5 console covers are not compatible with the PS5 Pro, the representative for the company told IGN. However, players will be able to swap out different console covers for the PS5 Pro when they become available in the future. Uh, the confirmation uh, will be especially heartbreaking for fans who managed to snag a 30th anniversary PS5 Slim, uh, but not the incredibly rare Pro model. Some were hoping they could still swap the PS1 style covers onto the Pro. That's really upsetting that it is the exact same other than the teeth. Yeah. I would like to see pictures of how it lines up because I, I mean, it, I understand that it's a different console. Yeah. But if it's literally the exact same, but they made it proprietary on purpose, that is fucked up. So, and really annoying. Like, it's yeah. not helpful for them. Like, they would save money yeah. by having it uh, uh, universal. Yeah. Because uh, it, they have to do injection molding for all of these, yeah. uh, dark, like, plates. And they have to make a lot of them because there's all different colors. Yeah. It would save so much money to just have them be universal. So it's kind of hard to tell, but the, the Reddit posts... Um, if you scroll up on the article, does show comparisons between the teeth, and it's you can see there's like slight differences here and there. Like one is in a different place than the other. Um, the the ones on the bottom are a little different. So like it's subtle differences like that, but like it's enough to make it not fit. Oh, that's so which annoying. Sucks. Yeah, they looks like the exact same yeah. size. Yeah, they said the physical shape of it is the same. It's just the you know. The locking teeth and that's the top yeah. yeah but they said the bottom would work the bottom would work i think because the bottom yeah. works because the disc drive yeah is cross compatible that, that makes a lot of sense and that sucks even worse because the disc drive is cross compatible the stand is cross compatible but not the face plates yeah i'm excited to make my video where i'm going to not have the disc drive and not be yeah. able to play most of my library <laughs> uh if you really wanted it to it would fit Cracking sounds, that's true. Yeah. The polls are in. Oh, boy. Sonic wins yeah, by buddy. a landslide. Yes, we can. 94% <laughs> on Twitch and only 80 on YouTube. Oh. That means a lot of people on YouTube are voting for Dr. Wiley. Yes. Dr. Wiley thinks that the robots are going to take our jobs. Yes. So, so people he... didn't... Uh, I mean, more people on YouTube sympathize right. with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, breaking news. By the way, well, next poll we're gonna do Pac-Man versus Agent Forty Seven. Okay. Uh, but while I set that up, breaking news, I put it in the. Uh, I'll read it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is from the Nintendo uh, Co Limited Japanese account. This is for Akawa. Uh, at today's <laughs> corporate management policy briefing, we announced that Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Online will be available on the successor to Nintendo Switch as well. Further information about the successor to the Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, will be announced at a later date. So at something we like new... He said, they, I mean, I don't know if he said it, but they yeah. had it in an investor meeting already. Yeah. Because it's already been a uh, point of contention for people. It's just, it's, it's just nice to hear in an official capacity, you know? 
Because, like, you hear, like, the rumors and you start to believe the rumors. And then if the rumors are not true, then that leads to disappointment. So it's just nice to have him come out and say, like, yes, it's going to be compatible with Switch stuff. Just hold your goddamn horses for a minute. It's also what we didn't hear previously was Nintendo Switch Online will be available. We yeah. knew there was going to be a unified account system of some kind. Yeah. So we inferred that it would be Nintendo Switch mm-hmm. Online. But he this by saying Nintendo Switch Online... Uh, it means that the subscription of Nintendo Switch Online will carry over between consoles, yeah. which is really cool. And I guess that's... I shouldn't really be giving them too much credit because yeah. that's just how every <laughs> that's fucking just how console it should be, yeah. works. Yeah. But now this begs the question, he specifically said Switch games, and then he specifically said Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. So, does that mean the next console will also be called the Switch in some capacity? Or are they going to change the name of the online service? Oh God, that's a well. No, because the it works. For okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be called the Switch too. I mean, okay. that's pre- uh, where we we are pretty much uh, uh, pretty much sure of that. We're pretty much sure of that. Um, this is very good news. I like. Yes. This. Um, we've talked a lot about uh the next console being backwards compatible. Yeah. So. Uh, this is great, and also uh, a lot of games are starting to release. That say uh, this game is coming for the Nintendo Switch family of systems, you yeah. know, like or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this pretty much also confirms that yeah. that uh, games will be like generational. Mm-hmm. I think some games. I mean, I don't know how it's going to work exactly. Mm-hmm. I'd imagine that Nintendo Switch One games will just work on Nintendo Switch yeah. Two, but I don't know what's going to happen when Nintendo Switch Two games, when people like, are you only going to be able to play? Uh, are there going to be some games that only work on Nintendo Switch Two? Are there going to be Nintendo Switch Two games that still work on Nintendo Switch One? Just right. one bet of just yeah. one works. Right. So yeah, I don't know. I think that still will, a lot of questions. That will be interesting. Um. Where are we at here? Uh, Jake the Bad Snake, thank you for the 16 months. I'm going to end this poll and start a new one before we start the backlog. Okay. Uh, because uh, we're almost done it. Uh, this was Pac-Man versus Agent 47. And the Twitch poll is over, and it's Pac-Man by a landslide. Yeah, same thing with the YouTube poll. Yes. Okay. Pac-Man it is. pac Man. And the next is Link and Leon S. Kennedy. Okay. Leon S. Kennedy. Great speaker. Great speeches. Link can barely talk. It's true. Yeah. He's got, yeah, he's got bad, uh, got, uh, he's not good with the people. No. Le- Leon, though, great with people. <laughs> Man who gets shit done. <laughs> uh. He, although, a cab. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Think about that. <laughs> okay, that might influence some. That people. might influence some no. people. Uh, all right. Backlog. 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 Oh. It's the backlog. Hey, what's up, Will? What is this show? The backlog is a segment of the Wolf Den podcast where we go through our entire video game collection, 973 games accumulated over almost 40 years of existence on this godforsaken planet. And today we're going to pick a game at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. 713. 713. Okay. Oh, that's a tilde. 713. That is Uncharted Golden Abyss for the PlayStation Vita. We have this? Yes. This uh, came with my Vita. Okay. When I bought the, the PS Vita, it came with like four games. Uh, it was the Walking Dead bundle, but Amazon gave me three extra games, and this was one of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people had this because it came with the, with the Vita. Yes. Also, people love the Vita. Beloved yeah. console. Yeah. Not a lot of great games on the Vita. Not I of... will say that. People yeah. people will chew me out for that. Yeah. But really, what do you got? Well, you don't I got think, much. I think the problem is what the Vita eventually became most beloved for was an indie console. And yeah. that and JRPGs. And JRPGs. Yeah. But that 
crown was quickly stolen by the switch like almost immediately well when, when the switch came when out the yeah, switch came sure. out yeah but th by then uh, sony had already abandoned yeah. the vita but i think the problem uh, was with the vita was that sony pushed it as uh, a console quality experience in your pocket yeah. uh and they used games like uncharted golden abyss uh to really showcase that um and because of that um People were expecting high quality, you know, AAA games, and they kept getting indie games, and people were getting like confused, and the price points were too high. Uh, so, like, that's kind of why, like, the the Vita didn't really find success uh, anywhere. That said, though, Uncharted: Golden Abyss, a very good game. Genuinely yeah. like the game a lot. It's a it's a classic style Uncharted game. It's not made by Naughty Dog. It's made by uh, their studio Bend, known for the Siphon Filter series and uh, Days Gone. Uh, but they do a really good job of like capturing the spirit and the um, the feel of the console games, just in a more portable, more digestible way. I guess you could say this is one of the games that tried really hard to make it like a console yeah. quality experience because this is literally just Uncharted. Yeah, the crosshair is massive. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that before. Yeah, um, but otherwise, this literally just looks like a regular old Uncharted game. Yeah. Uh, did you? How much did you play of this game? I, I didn't I play it. it at all. I beat it. Oh, you beat it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think this is the lowest rated Uncharted game. Yeah, it's, it's still a decent rating. I yeah. think it is one of the highest rated uh, Vita games. But probably. It's, but it's like not very highly. I mean, rated. like if you're gonna compare it to like the console games, obviously it's not gonna rank as high. But I think for what it is, you know, a first go of an Uncharted game on a handheld, I think it like hits the mark perfectly. It does suffer from like, you know, usually when a system launches and it has gimmicky things, games will like pack, you know, be packed with like all the console gimmicks. And this game fucking had it in spades. Like you use the touch screen to climb. You use the back of the control, the touchpad on the back of the controller to like climb up ladders and stuff. You, um, it, it uses the gyro in like unintuitive ways. Uh, you have to like, scratch the touch screen in order to like reveal parts of the map and stuff you literally had to use like all the dumb gimmicks of the vita to progress throughout the game some of them you you don't have to use but like some of them they make you use and it kind of does take you out of the experience but like if you get past that like it's a good time i mean sony i mean every first party console company wants to show off every little piece of the hardware that they made yeah uh sony's does that a lot they they want to show off every mm -hmm. little every little nook and cranny of the vita uh i have here the metacritic of uncharted uh the actual lowest rated uncharted is the movie at 45 yeah on metacritic. <laughs> uh but you also have a uh, fortune hunter with 77 that's an ios oh, game yes that's uh, i have i play that game that game's all right what is it it's just um it's like a puzzle game okay yeah well, yeah, Uncharted Golden Abyss has an 80, which yeah. is lower than every other Uncharted game besides the ones that I just mentioned. Right. Uh, what's the one that came out after 4? Wasn't there like a... Lost Legacy. I don't see that here. I just saw it. Oh, 84. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, this is the lowest rated one. Mm -hmm. 80's not bad. No! I, I don't want to knock it for that, but uh, it's not... An Uncharted game. <laughs> it's an Uncharted <laughs> game, but like it's not like no. the big bombastic Uncharted game. I I would still classify it as an Uncharted game because it gets very like very close to giving you like. Well, what? let's see now. You played it. Yes. You played all of the Uncharted games. Yeah. Uh, except you didn't play Lost Legacy. I did. Oh, you did. Yeah. You played all the Uncharted yes. games. Now, Metal Gear. Yes. As the all of the main games. Then you got like Acid. That's like an offshoot doesn't yeah. count. But Peace Walker counts as one of the main games. Right. Is this the Peace Walker of Uncharted or is it not that close to a main game? No, I would Okay, here's the problem with that. Okay. Because in terms of like you know, overall necessity to the canon, I would say that yes, it is the Peace Walker of the series because it is it is a canonical entry in the series um it stars uh nolan north and uh the other guy <laughs> <laughs> as uh nathan drake and sully um it, it was uh overseen by emmy henning when she was still working at naughty dog 
So it it has all the necessary ingredients to be a part of the Uncharted series. It serves as a prequel to the first game, so it doesn't contradict anything. But you know, it adds a nice bit of like lore and flavor to the overall series. In terms of if it's the piece, is it the Peace Walker of the series? Because Peace Walker is a lot of people's favorite Metal Gear game, and Golden Abyss is nobody's favorite Uncharted <laughs> game. That is a That's, good point. Yeah. yeah. People love Peace Walker. Yeah, so that's that's where I like have that that's where like I take issue with that uh analogy. But like that said, I do think this is a valid entry into the Uncharted canon. Hira in the you in the Twitch chat says it's the fifty fourth highest rated Vita game on Metacritic, and that is that is yes. I'm looking at a lot of other things that are rated way higher than that. Um so if you've never played an Uncharted game before, probably don't start with this one. No, don't start with this one. Um, it, I looked it up on how long to beat. It is 10-hour main story. It'll probably take you 12 hours. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the shorter games in the series. Um, That's still a decently long yeah. time to play a game, yeah. especially a, a handheld game. Yeah. I am surprised this never got ported to PS4 yeah. or PS5. Because I don't think it's, it would be that hard to do. I don't think it would be that hard to strip out or readjust any of like the Vita-specific functionality. I mean, because they did it with Gravity Rush. They did it with Tearaway. Tearaway is the most Vita-ass game on the planet, and they found a way to make it work for the PS4. Yeah, so, there's a lot of stuff on the PS4 controller that I guess they could yeah. they could adapt, but still, there was a that, <laughs> there's a lot of Vita shit on there. Yeah. There's even like the camera and stuff. Yeah, it, it yeah. takes a lot. So, but I think this is a game that could easily be adapted to console. I'm like, why they've never done it, I don't know. Uh, and that is a shame. Because I think if more people played this game, it would give P uh, Sony an incentive to make uh, newer, smaller Uncharted games while we wait for... Well, I don't know if Naughty Dog is going to do another big one. But, you know. I don't know. I think Naughty Dog might have a new IP up their sleeve. Yeah. That's what I think. Guys, thanks for watching the backlog. We're going to get back to our podcast. Yes. But uh, if you're watching after, goodbye. Bye. All right. For all you other people, uh, Link wins 79% against Leon S. Kennedy's 21%. Okay. And YouTube is similar, 66%. So uh, I guess ACAB uh, really worked. I guess. Uh, so next poll is Mario versus Laura. Oh, how I feel about these issues. Yes. <laughs> Putting on my red voter hat. <laughs> Mario, a plumber, a man of the people. Lara Croft, a rich aristocrat who just goes around stealing artifacts from other people's cultures. Really, <laughs> come on now. I think Mario has everybody's best interests in mind, even if he doesn't always yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, get there. Yes. but Might be a little dumb, but... Important, Lara Croft, hot. That is very important. Yeah. That means a lot to a lot of people. Yes. Okay. Uh, next news. We talked about the breaking news already. Yeah. Let's talk about the Nintendo <laughs> Music app. Yes. Uh, Nintendo has launched a dedicated mobile app called Nintendo Music for Switch Online members, allowing users to stream and download a variety of music tracks from the firm's wide range of franchises available on iOS and Android. The app contains music from new releases along with retro classics from Nintendo's library and also includes the ability to hide certain tracks that may contain game spoilers as well as extend or loop tracks so you can keep listening longer. Uh, you'll also be able to create playlists, uh, search existing playlists based on specific characters, and select featured playlists to fit your current mood. Um, more music will also, of course, be added in the future, but franchises highlighted in the debut trailer include the likes of Splatoon, Zelda, Metroid, Mario, Pokemon, uh, Donkey Kong, Star Fox, Fire Emblem, and more. Essentially, then, it sounds like Nintendo's take on Spotify, which is pretty awesome for Switch Online uh, members. At the moment, we've been able to verify its availability in North America, the UK, Europe, and Japan. Um, it's available to download via the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Um, so, what are your thoughts? So, I messed around with it a little bit. Yeah. It is very cool. There yes. is an option on every song, uh, I believe every song, every song that I saw, mm -hmm. uh, to extend the song. Yeah. Like, like a lot of times when I'm looking up video game music on YouTube, uh, I either get the two minute version of the song 
or the one hour extended yeah. version of the song. And I'm usually using it for YouTube videos. Yeah. So I want the short version. Mm -hmm. I don't need the 30 minute extent. I don't want yeah. all of that data. I just want the little thing. This gives you the option to extend it from like, have the two minute version, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour. Yeah. You know? Um, I think it's really cool. And it has a huge library. It yeah. has all of the Wii stuff. Does it have all the Wii stuff? It has a lot of the Wii stuff. Yeah. It has like, everything that I wanted. It right. has the Wii shop Well, song. I just remember like looking through it and seeing like it was like pretty limited at launch. Because like if you go through, it doesn't have like every NES game. It doesn't have like every SNES right. game. I think it only has one GameCube game, and that's Metroid Prime. You know, uh, and that's on Switch. So, you know, I think like they're they're being very conservative with their initial launch lineup. They're gonna roll out a lot of stuff. It's gonna, yeah. yeah I, I have a feeling that they're gonna uh, be on on top of it, like they are with releasing games on Nintendo Switch Online. You yeah, know, we get where they've been pretty. Uh, they've Hopefully. been releasing a lot of stuff. People are upset that that library is pretty small. Yeah. It's gotten really big over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. So I'd imagine that they've been working on this for a bit, and this is what they were able to launch with. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they're working on putting more stuff on. Yeah. It. Uh. I will note though, um, why isn't this just Spotify? Like, why do you have to go yeah, like, the extra just... mile? Well, it's part of their own subscription, right? But I mean, like, they could easily just put all this shit on Spotify. They <laughs> like, could. and they should. They should because other people reupload. Also, I've seen people like uh, discuss this too, and I think it's also worth pointing out: uh, no composer credits. Yeah, that's really dumb. Yeah, it's really dumb. Like, I know Nintendo is, like, very, like, hush-hush about who works on what, but, like, we all know that Koji Kondo worked on Super Mario Brothers, the yeah. original. Just put his name there. He was in the announced trailer for it. So, like, why are you hiding his name? Why are you hiding uh, Takeshi's name on all this? It's... Not Takeshi, it, Totaka. It's very stupid. Yeah. Um... They should integrate it with uh, Spotify or put all the stuff on Spotify or other yeah. streaming platforms because there's a lot of integration that you're missing out on with something like Spotify. Mm -hmm. Like they can get a kickback from some of the stuff they put yeah. on there. It's not going to be as much as they would if you just paid for a subscription on yeah. their stuff. But there's, you know, like there's like Twitch integrations that use Spotify. Yeah. There's other other stuff that use Spotify integration. So it'd be nice to have that. Uh, there's no desktop app, and I like listening to stuff yeah. on desktop. Like having back, I always for my streams have background music, and it'd be nice to have yeah. like a playlist of Nintendo Switch stuff. Um, another thing is that I suspect that this is like one of people's biggest arguments against Nintendo is like, why aren't all their songs on YouTube or readily available for me yeah. to listen to? I'm just gonna re-upload it, you know? Yeah. And now you have less of an excuse to do that because have the songs available right but you have to be a switch online subscriber already yeah and like if i'm a, if i'm not a switch online subscriber but i have a spotify account like yeah. i would rather, much rather listen to it on spotify well i'm gonna say that i think that this is this this is one step closer to them dmcaing like i mean they dmca people who upload yeah. music all the time like silver gunner and stuff yeah but uh they could go a lot harder now that they have their own uh mm -hmm. way to profit from yeah. it yeah uh, to your point that they aren't crediting people, I saw Reggie fils uh, There was like a, a thread on Twitter, people arguing about uh, there not being credits on any yeah. of this stuff. And someone said that uh, it's a Japanese company uh, and they don't credit people or something. <laughs> uh, and then they're like, no, Nintendo is a Japanese and an American company. And then this guy said, uh, hey, Reggie, <laughs> when you were in charge of Nintendo America, about how influential would you say was Nintendo America uh, with Nintendo Japan? Reggie says, read my book and see how influential we were during my time at Nintendo. Uh, Wii Sports packed in with the Wii. That was him, mm -hmm. I guess. Positioning the launch marketing for Switch. We drove it. Game development for most of the key franchises is done in Japan, but even that is influenced. Uh, so I guess the point is that uh, it's not a Japanese thing that they're not crediting people. Yeah, It's just 
It's a, it's a specific company thing. Yeah, it's the company they're being yeah. assholes. It's yeah. not, it has nothing to do with mm -hmm. the fact that they're Japanese. Uh, okay. Well, polls are in. Mario wins by a landslide. That's, right. my, that's my goat. <laughs> uh, sorry, Laura Croft. Still hot, though. Still hot. Still, it's, you, you're not not hot because you lose. Yeah. Uh, the next poll will be Nathan Drake and Solid Snake. Okay. Let me take my hat off and put my bandana <laughs> on because you all know who I'm voting for. This Again, round. Solid Snake, uh, military veteran. Uh, Although defected. No, Big Boss defected. Solid Snake went independent, didn't he? He retired. He and retired from active military and went independent. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. And there was, there's some conflict there's, going okay, on. Okay, yeah, okay, yes, technically it became a PMC. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I'm, technically. I think his political allegiance is independent, is, is right. libertarian. Yes. <laughs> I would say he's, like, estranged from, True. from traditional America. Yes. And also, everything I said about Laura Croft applies to Nathan Drake, you know, white dude coming in and like pillaging the land of like you know the native the darker skinned natives like that's what he does also nathan drake hot so it's true solid snake solid snake rough <laughs> yeah rugged masculine so your choice america your choice america i don't want to influence the polls no but you know who i'm voting for <laughs> um he would listen. He would make a great president. You, honestly, so, well, I'm saying Solid Snake. Would if you want to get technical, he he did become the president because a clone of him was the president already. Okay. If that's, you want, if you want to get true. technical here, that's it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And how did that go? Uh, he was killed. He did a he did crash a ship into. A building in New York City. Yeah, the, the Federal Reserve, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. God, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of that going on, huh? I like. <laughs> I, I, there's a lot of early 2000s video games that are doing a little. Uh, you know, Spawn Wave posted a clip of um from Metal Gear Two, and it was like oddly poignant to like mm -hmm. the current state of the country. And I just couldn't help but think, like, when that game came out, everybody hated it because you played as the the less masculine boy like you played as Ryan, you didn't play a snake we didn't see all the other stuff kojima was trying to tell us about <laughs> it kind of reminds it's it's exactly like you know how you know george lucas had some very like serious things to say about like the nature of like the fragile the fragile nature of democracy mm. in the star wars prequels but because Jar Jar Banks was making fart sounds, like we all wanted him to die. <laughs> yes. So yeah, we were we were blinded. We were we were we were dumb people back then. Yes. What I'm trying to say is, everybody go apologize to George Lucas right now. No. No. Right you now. You're, you're, you don't have to. right now. Uh oh no my uh. Crash. Oh no. Um, all right, next news. Sorry, Steam Deck. Sorry, Steam Deck Apex Legends players. Those Linux cheaters means the Battle Royale won't be officially supported on the handheld anymore. And this is not the first case of, uh, uh this is, in the past, like, two months, a lot of games yes. have updated their anti-cheat and removed functionality for the steam deck yeah. which is really which weird and strange and upsetting. Sucks. Yeah. yeah uh in order to stop apex legends uh linux cheating problem respawn is pulling support for the steam deck obviously a majority of players that play games like apex legends will do so on console or pc particularly if they want to get good at the game uh but there will be plenty of those who just want to have fun casual time laying in bed playing it on the steam deck unfortunately though unless you're a bit tech savvy you now won't be able to apex Le legends is currently officially available via steam and as such has um has been a game you can play on valve's handheld the steam deck except earlier this week respawn announced it's pulling support for linux which the steam deck runs on 
in our efforts to combat cheating on uh, an apex we we've identified linux os as being a path uh, for a variety of impacts of impactful exploits and cheats reads a blog post explaining the decision as a result we've decided to block linux os access to the game while this will impact a small number of apex players we believe the decision will meaningfully reduce instances of cheating in our game linux is used by default on the steam deck there is currently no reliable way for us to differentiate a legitimate steam deck from a malicious cheat claiming to be from a steam deck via linux this isn't that unusual as there are plenty of big shooters that have never supported the Steam Deck, including Fortnite. But as noted by Games Radar, Apex Legends uh, was a quite popular title on the handheld, sitting within the top 50 most played games in the past year. The blog post does note that it is still possible to play on the Steam Deck. You just have to install Windows on the device, which might not be something everyone wants to do. Sorry, Steam Deck players. Respawn does say that it looks forward to sharing future anti-cheat updates. So I guess uh, you can cross your fingers and hope this gets reversed. Uh, it's at some point. Uh, Solid Snake wins. New poll. Master Chief versus Cloud Strife. Cloud Strife. Right. Not the not the software that yes. went down. Master Chief versus Cloud Strife. The poll is going on right yes. now. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to blast through these because we got a lot more. Yes. In the tier to go. Uh, yeah. No, this is terrible. Uh, it sucks. What anti cheat specifically were they using? Does it say or not? Uh, for them, I don't know. Uh, it might be proprietary. There was a specific yeah. anti-cheat that updated uh, that broke functionality for a couple of games. Yeah. Uh, and it sucks because... Oh, one of them was Grand Theft Auto. Grand yeah. Theft Auto 5. Five. Uh, yeah. They updated their anti... It, it, they used a third-party anti-cheat. Mm -hmm. And then that anti-cheat updated. And Grand Theft Auto did not, like update themselves to yeah. work with the new update or something like that mm. uh there is an issue because linux i i would assume that linux is just easier for people to develop for or to like you know do themselves yeah um so there's a lot of hack software that uses linux yeah. unfortunately and the steam deck runs on linux so the easiest way for these companies to get around the there's not a lot of people that play on Linux, even yeah. with the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck ballooned a Linux player base by like a lot. Yeah. But even still, it's a very small amount of people that use Linux. So instead of putting the work in to get rid of the cheaters that are using Linux, they just decided, nah, we'll cut the whole thing off. Yeah. And it sucks because there's a lot of people who bought a Steam Deck because this game runs on Steam Deck. Yeah. I always tell people who ask me what should I get a uh, PC handheld or a Steam Deck? Like, should I get a Windows handheld yeah. or a Steam Deck? I say you should make a, a T chart of what games work on which one and mm -hmm. see if there's any that aren't going to work on Steam Deck that would work on a PC handheld. And there are people who decided, hey, Apex Legends works on a Steam Deck. Yeah. I'm going to get a Steam Deck. And... Now all of a sudden it doesn't. Yeah, they're playing this thing, and now all of a sudden it's you can't anymore. You can't. And yeah. there's people who play games like Apex, and that's the only game that yeah. they play. So imagine getting a Steam Deck for this one game, and then all of a sudden they take the game away from you. Yeah. That sucks. It's really bad. Mm -hmm. There should be uh, repercussions for something like that. I think at some level Valve knows this because like GTA left Steam Deck, um, Apex is leaving Steam Deck. Valorant won't run on the Steam Deck because their anti cheat uses like a kernel level uh, program that it works with Windows, but not on Linux. Um, Valve, I don't think, would ever put uh, Valorant on right. Linux. That, that would be crazy. Yeah. And also, like we said, Fortnite doesn't work on Steam Deck because of issues like this. Fortnite should. I mean, it yeah. do doesn't it? I think it does, but like you, you have, have to you go have through to, a lot of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. So I think on some level, Valve knows this and like, They've got to be working on some way to like address this issue. I'm confident like, if all that all these big games are like pulling off of Steam Deck. I'm confident that Valve uh, knows this and is trying to help, but yeah. I'm not confident that these developers care at all. Right? Because they just see the low player base and they're like, "No, nah, we don't need." This. Yeah. But meanwhile, it's a whole console that you're ripping the game away from. Like, mm -hmm. imagine if Apex just stopped working on Xbox. Like, that yeah. would be a huge deal. Mm -hmm. It's it's a and this isn't gonna be the last time we see this. This yeah. is gonna keep happening. Oh yeah. 
I don't know what else could be done. Like, the, what other repercussions can you have against a company for just taking a game away from a whole console? Yeah, I don't know. Because it is just a Because, like, it doesn't benefit anyone. Like, yeah, you could punish them by, like, not letting them publish games on Steam anymore. But, like, then, you know, people are just going to go to wherever that game yeah. is being published. Yeah. Sucks. All right. Uh, Master Chief wins. Uh, by... 64% on Twitch and only 56 on YouTube. Interesting. So that's the end of the first round. Uh, so who do we got next? We got Pikachu versus Kratos. <laughs> uh, all right. What's, what's next? Uh, next is speaking of having things taken away from you, League of Legends uh, Worlds tickets taken from fans at the last minute and given to Lincoln Park. Excuse me. Uh, a group of League of Legends fans were allegedly left without tickets to this weekend's League of Legends Worlds Championships in London after their box was given to the band Lincoln Park hours before the show. Uh, the event, which took place from London's O2 Arena this weekend saw thousands of fans flock from around the world to watch the world's best League of Legends players compete for the top prize. Alongside that, Linkin Park performed at the event. However, one group of fans said that they were left scrambling for tickets after finding out 90 minutes before the event was set to begin uh, that, uh, that the box which uh, the group had paid for was refunded and instead they claimed given to Linkin Park. No fuck? replacement or alternative tickets were offered, they said. Uh... Today, I was supposed to sit in the VIP box with uh, G at G2 League to watch the world live, wrote Sloppy Walrus on Twitter. <laughs> Unfortunately, it got canceled and refunded at the last minute, uh, an hour and a half before the opening ceremony. It turned out that Lincoln Park booked our exact VIP box last minute, so the venue just took us off the list because it's fucking Lincoln Park. That's on uh, That on its own sucks for us because we already traveled and planned everything, but the worst part is that we literally didn't even get any replacement seats. Our access to the arena was just scra uh, scrapped and refunded. Uh, VGC has reached out to Riot and the O2 for comment on the issue, and we'll update the story uh, should we receive one. Fans affected by the issue were quick to point out that it was likely not the fault of Linkin Park, but that due to the band's fame, event organizers likely decided that the band would take priority over fans who previously booked the seats. Yeah, I'm sure if they <laughs> said to Linkin Park, like, hey, people already booked this. Yeah. You know what? They didn't do that because it would make them look bad that they didn't have enough seats yeah. for fucking Lincoln Park yeah. you know but also like do they need a box seat to have them be backstage yeah like that, that I don't understand like they, there's got to be more room for them backstage also how did they know that it was for Lincoln how did the fans who got their seats removed how did they know it was Lincoln Park how did they, <sighs> they find that they out? didn't say or at least the article didn't say uh i'm guessing either the, whoever told them that they got the seats removed, like told them That's that was going to Lincoln weird. Park, or maybe somebody from Lincoln Park said, "Like, hey, we hey, got fuck you, we're taking yeah. your seats." <laughs> or they're like, "Yo, check out these box seats we got to League of Legends World," and the guy's like, "Those are my fucking box seats." I this is completely on the event organizers for for a hundred percent because you don't want to tell Lincoln Park, "Sorry, we don't have seats." Yeah, but you also, I mean, you should have reserved it earlier. Somebody fucked up here. Yeah. And honestly, if you told Lincoln Park, like, oh, sorry, we don't have the box for you, they're not, I'm sure they wouldn't make a big stink. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay. We got, did we thank Jake the Bad Snake for the 16 months? I think we did. I think so. Breaking news. Polls are in. Uh, Pikachu over Kratos. 65%. Look at that. Percent. Both on YouTube and on actually more on YouTube. Interesting. Interesting. Um Okay. Next is gonna be Sonic versus Pac Man. Okay. And what is the next news that we have? The next news that we have is 
Uh, Ubisoft's NFT RPG is reportedly being plagued by a single user auto winning every game. Hell yeah. Ubisoft's recently released NFT based RPG has reportedly been affected by what appears to be a game breaking exploit. The game launched on PC last week and sees players assembling groups of three characters to do battle against enemies in turn based combat. The game's Web3 functionality is that each of these characters essentially functions as an NFT. Uh, and can be purchased with in-game currency or cryptocurrency. Ooh. <clears throat> As noted by Twitter user uh, Juanio, uh, players of the company's Web3 competitive turn-based RPG champion tactics, uh, Grimoria Chronicles, are reporting uh, that it's impossible to play the game. The reason is because of one user whose name is usually either uh, Shirley11 or Paulstar111, uh, who appears to be automatically winning every online battle. On the game's Discord server, players are complaining that when they start a competitive game online, they are matched with this player every single time and mm -hmm. then automatically lose to them without the match even taking place. Uh, one player pointed out that wa that the Paul Star 111 account uh, was the top ranking with over 56,000 matches played. It's not yet clear how the player has been able to connect to so many games and automatically win them. Uh, it is absurd that a company in late 2024 have a game unplayable for days because one guy decided to ruin the game. Discord user uh, Kataros wrote, I'm sorry. The level of incompetence here is alarming. Uh, last time I played Paul Star 111 on the ranking, he had 56K matches. There are 10 of us complaining on here. Now pictured the now picture the other thousands of players who are trying the game and probably will never come back because the game is unplayable. A moderator on the Discord server uh, posted on Saturday that the team was aware of the error, had banned the player, and was hoping uh, to have a fix ready for later today. However, some players have been continuing to report that they're still being matched with the player's account. This is the name of the game? Uh, Champion Tactics Grimoria Chronicles. Ah, uh, okay. It is an NFT-based turn uh turn-based tactical rpg man ubisoft really batting a thousand here huh oh yeah and they're they're they want they want to know why they're not doing well we got to launch an investigation into why we're not doing well i've never heard of this game before in my life i remember like they announced like back when like nfts like first like became popular and every company said like we're gonna we're gonna get in on this shit they announced something they were like one of the first companies to announce something and then they like quietly launched this like they didn't say like what it was during development, they just like what we saw our NFC game. It looks like it was launched this summer. Yeah, at least that's when these were minted. <laughs> it looks like they just don't care about this game anymore. Yeah, uh, you look on the official website for the game, they show like these new champions that you can't get anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks like they were too far in development to cancel it, which is mm -hmm. weird because people, you know, companies cancel games. I mean. PlayStation just canceled a game. Yeah, a few weeks after it came out. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Ubisoft, it's, they're not smart. Yeah. So, no. Something over there is 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 terribly. Wrong. Yeah. Looks like Demio, that VR game that I liked. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. This looks stupid. Yeah, I'm sure. Look, I'm sure it's a bad game. <laughs> um, made even worse by the NFT integration. Um, and now the fact that like one fucking guy is like ruining it for everyone. You know what? Good for him. <laughs> Makes, people should not play this game. That's an insane. That means nobody's monitoring this game. But at like, all, all right, and, and it and it's a game that has money involved. Yeah, you know. But like, is he beating everybody because he's good at the game, or like, did he find like a uh, exploit that he can like, oh. you know, cheat the system with? It looks like an exploit for sure. Yeah. Um. The video I just saw looked like you just can't even get into a game. You get right. matched against him, and you just immediately get kicked out. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the guy the guy is maliciously doing something, right? And you have to expect stuff like this when there's NFTs. Like, first of all, there's a lot of crypto scams going on. Yes. Second of all, uh, if you're playing this, if you're playing a game for real money. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to fucking have people going hard and they're yeah. going to try to exploit it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You really got to be on top of that shit. Uh, Sonic won the poll. Next up is Mario versus Link. Okay. No. Uh, maybe. <laughs>
Um, all right, next news is the last news. Okay. Uh, the House of the Dead movie. We're getting another one, this time directed by the guy who made the Resident Evil movies. Uh, Paul W.S. Anderson will write and direct The House of the Dead, an action-packed feature based on the legacy Sega franchise. Anderson will produce alongside his partner Jeremy Bolt. Sega's Toru Nakahara uh, will produce alongside with Story Kitchen's uh, Dimitri M. Johnson, Mike Goldberg, and Dan Jevons. Um, Timothy I. Stevenson will be an executive producer. Anderson and Bolt have brought several game franchises to the screen successfully, including Mortal Kombat, the Resident Evil franchise, and most recently, Monster Hunter. The House of the Dead debuted in 1996 as an on-rail shooter game, uh, fast-paced action horror with groundbreaking zombie premise. Uh, that included the innovation of giving its undead villains the ability to run, something that inspired films from Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead remake to the Mark Foster-directed World War Z. It was House of the Dead that first involved the flesh, eat the flesh eaters from the lumbering... Uh, Sorry, it was House of the Dead that first evolved the flesh eaters from the lumbering stumblers that George Romero brought to life in his movies. In the arcade game, uh, players take on the role of AMS agents, a government agency tasked with uh, thwarting conspiracies of organizations that threaten the world. The title comes from the bureau they work for because their life expectancies are brief. Uh, I've loved video games since the 90s, Anderson told Deadline. Back then, I was a big player of video games and arcades, which is how I happened upon Mortal Kombat. And pretty much at the same time, I was also playing a lot of House of the Dead. It's a title that I've always loved. The IP has grown in strength, and now it's re uh, really cross-generational. I was in, uh, I was one of the original players, but now I have teenage kids who also play. Uh, that is a real, that is a, the real attraction for me, that you've got cross-generational piece of IP. We're going to base the movie on House of the Dead 3. And if you know the mythology, that is all about family conflict amidst action and scares. Uh, it's about a woman, Lisa Rogan, who is attempting to rescue her father. It is also uh, it is also about Daniel Kieran, uh, who is the son of the man who caused this mutant outbreak in the first place and who has to deal with the sins of the father. Uh, then he goes on to talk about his approach to the, to the movie. Uh, high immersive kinetic video game as... Uh, which is why Zack Snyder took these creatures and made them fast moving. Blah, 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 blah. Why is it three? I... Everybody loves House of the Two. Yeah. I mean, the story's bad. But yeah. That's like, why people like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, o like. Also, where are these pictures from? I think these. I've never seen House of the Dead look like this. Yeah. I, I want to say they started filming it already. I mean, this doesn't look. I don't know. I can't. Sega slash Hearn Hill Media is. I guess Hearn Hill Media is the one who's doing it. Yeah. Maybe they did. Maybe, Maybe it looks yeah. CG. Apparently, they're in the West Village. No, Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> um, the West Village of Ontario. Right. Yeah, it's a film studio. Okay, I guess this is. Yeah, I guess this is it. Yeah. This looks CG. Is it gonna be CG? No, it's gonna be live action. It's Paul W. S. Anderson who is married to Mila Jovovich. So she will probably be the main character in the movie. So. This is a huge upset. <laughs> uh, Link wins against Mario. Wow. 53% Link wow. on YouTube. But 60 on Twitter. Interesting. That, this, Interesting. this sucks. I'm going to have to move out of the country. <laughs> uh. I don't know how you guys could let this happen. Uh, you know, you know what? It's rigged. That's we should we should have stopped the steal. We should have stopped. We should have stopped it. Yeah. Yeah. No. We should have stopped it when YouTube was at about forty nine percent. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like, this is yeah. this is an illegitimate candidacy. What we need right now is we need to go on to kick and have them find all the missing votes for Mario. That's, That's what right. We need to do. We're gonna go live on Kick any minute now. <laughs> uh, next is Solid Snake and Master Chief. Okay. And again, guys, don't fucking let me down here. Uh, so yeah, back to House of the Dead. Uh, I was out at an arcade with my buddies uh, not too long ago, and we played House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn from 2018. Uh, that game had many zombies that looked exactly like Slash. <laughs> the guitar player for Guns N' Roses. Wait, wait. House of the Dead Zombie Slash. Yeah. 
You see, is it none of these, right? Uh, no, none of those. Okay. Which House of the Dead? Scarlet Dawn. It's uh, from 2018. It is the Scarlet fifth mainline Dawn. installment in the House of the Dead series. He, Paul W. S. Anderson said that it's a cross generational game. I don't think it is. I think like, you know, the first three titles maybe, and then like it kind of just like faded. It's like locked in a very specific it's time a frame. It's fucking Dreamcast slash arcade game. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and that's all people know it for. So is that slash? No. Nothing for you. Like try like. I'm, I'm just, just trying to find all the different zombies yeah. that are in the game. You you'd be shocked to know that there just is not a lot of information about this game. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Good times. I mean, there was already a House of the Dead movie back when House of the Dead was relevant. It's of course directed by Uwe Boll, the worst director in modern history. He gave us the Blood Rain movie, the Far Cry movie, the uh, Dungeon Siege movie, uh, the Postal movie. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So it's got to be better than that. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine this being any good. No. Is that the last news? I believe that was the last news. Okay. Time for the tweet of the week. Oh boy. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. It's been quite the week. Yes, it has. Twitter doesn't is not loading fast. Uh, this is by Pop Base. It's Doja Cat dressed up as the flower from Congress Bad for a Day for Halloween. Here she is. That is, I remember seeing this and like that is mighty impressive. Yeah, that is a very specific reference. Uh, yes, and good on her for making it. Yep. So I recently did an ad. I forgot what the ad was. It's mm -hmm. like a sponsor spot in one of my videos, and the bit was that. Oh, oh. God damn it! I gotta like remove that button. <laughs> The bit was that the guy, the character I was playing, he was in a job interview. Yeah. And the interviewer found that he used to run a forum that was specifically about the flower from Congress mm -hmm. Bad Fur Day. That's supposed to be like an embarrassing moment. Um, and I was explaining this to Pacini, the guy that yeah. I make the ads with. And he has never played Congress Bad Fur Day. I'm <laughs> like, I promise you this is a thing people know about. Yeah. And I have been proven correct. Yeah. Doja Cat fucking. Doja Cat, big time gamer. She yeah. Plays, plays a lot of Fortnite. Yeah. So, so she must know what it is. But like, do you think her audience does? Because <laughs> no. Congress Bad Fur Day, not a very popular N64 game when it initially came out. So, and now all these years later, it's not like Conquer is very relevant. Uh, we have some more heartbreaking news. Oh, no. Uh, this one's a weird one, though. What are we going to do about this? Master Chief. 88% wow. on Twitch, but on YouTube, Solid Snake, 52%. Oh, interesting. So I might have to do some math here. Uh, Actually, no, I don't. Master Chief won by like a lot on, on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just Master Chief. Okay. Yeah. I think it's just Master Chief. That sucks. That sucks. Yeah. I don't like that. But you know what? This is the popular vote. Yeah. We don't have the electrical college here. Or do we? <laughs> uh, next, we're doing Pikachu versus Sonic. Okay. And this is also the time of the show when we're going to talk to you. Yes, let's start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast or on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Yes, I have it up already. I'll okay. start reading. Um, Buck Knife Parabellum from last week's show. The way I see it, if game companies don't want us to own games, then I can wholeheartedly dive into the decades of amazing games already out physically. I'm really hoping that Nintendo continues to have physical releases for generations to come. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been playing a lot of older games, like the few minutes I have to play games. And like, honestly, they're a lot more, there's most of the time they're a lot better than like what modern gaming is offering. So there's always that option. That's like, sometimes it's the best way to discover something you like is to go back and revisit classics or like discover them for the first time yeah i mean it's weird the way games have become these days like um i we talk about this a lot how it used to be like 
a new game would come out and then everybody's playing that one game yeah and then uh they move on to the next game whatever the zeitgeist is but yeah. these days people are playing the same games over and over again like mm -hmm. fortnite big games mm -hmm. uh i'll say i'm falling in line with that except a lot of the games that i'm playing are older games yeah like uh i might be playing valorant all the time but I'm very frequently going back and playing Sonic Adventure 2 or yeah. like freaking the original Mario Brothers or yeah. Mario 64 and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I own those games. I'm going to be playing the fuck out of them. Yeah. And modding them to all hell. In terms of Nintendo continuing to do physical releases for generations to come, I do think they will, of, of all the console makers, be the holdout. You know, they'll continue to release their games physically. Mm -hmm. They'll continue to have a presence in like store shelves and stuff. But, you know, eventually that'll also end, I think. You know, because Nintendo, above all, loves control of their IP. So, and there's no better control than digital control. Uh, Kurt Hoffman says, in regards to the DMCA conversation in Sweden, you can borrow video games from some of the bigger public libraries. The selection isn't always the newest stuff, but gives the opportunity to those who can't afford to buy games to enjoy the hobby. That's what's weird. Yeah, like about we, America is that they we just lost the legislation that will allow digital libraries yeah. to have video games, but physical libraries have physical yeah, games. Yeah, like not I, a lot. I go to my library all the time like with my kids and like I check out the video games and they have a video game selection. It's not big. Like it's not it doesn't have like everything, but there I can take out PS5 games, I can take out PS4 games, I can take out Wii games. Sometimes even so like that's okay. I think the the problem is it's the idea of like you know emulating the game on like a PC. Like they're hung up on that because they they equate they equate uh emulation of systems at home as piracy. Yeah. Yeah, whereas like when the video game companies do it that's official means. It's a stigma. And yeah, it, and it sucks. Yeah, it really sucks. And I, I'd like to try to campaign against that. I don't yeah. know how, but uh, Pikachu win. Okay, against Sonic. That's another upset. That sucks. On Twitch, only by fifty two percent. But on YouTube, by sixty. So what you're saying is it's close enough that there might be some close. votes. We should stop the. There steal. might be some votes missing. Find me eleven thousand yeah. votes for Sonic. <laughs> Next is Link versus Master Chief. Okay. This is really interesting. I think YouTube crashed on me. Oh, well. Uh, doing that. Out from under from last week says, I love your show. It's like comfort food for my eyes and ears. Thanks. Even when we yell at the Even beginning of the yell? show. That's Thank comforting. You. I think the uh, when I played the Digital Foundry clip, I think it was very loud. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm very sorry. Not an RPG guy. I was looking at the potential Game of the Year winners, and I was actually surprised to see Astro Bot and Echoes of Wisdom in the top five. Weirdly, though, IGN didn't put Wukong on the list. I thought that'd be number one for sure. What are your guys' Game of the Year so far, and do you think anything coming up has a chance? I don't think there's anything coming up has a chance yeah i don't know um i am not surprised with i mean yeah. i i think wukong is weird because i think people kind of jumped behind that game for a lot of weird reasons yeah i don't think it looked particularly like amazing i don't think wukong is gonna like be in conversation for game of the year and let alone like any any time past 2024 yeah. like i think it was like a Blink and you miss it experience. Yeah. So that, yeah, I don't think Wukong really has any lasting in, impact in terms of like big games from this year. Like, I think the only big game still left to come out is Indiana Jones. And I'll be shocked if that like has any like game of the year candidacy, you know, not because it's going to be bad, but because like it's a licensed Xbox exclusive game, you know, <laughs> you know, so I just, I think he's referring to the IGN list. So I just yeah. tried to find the IGN list. And number, I, I randomly stumbled upon a community IGN poll. Mm -hmm. And the number one is Wukong. <laughs> it's Black Myth Wukong. <laughs> That's so weird. Wow. Uh, best video games of 2024 so far. That's a different article right. from them. 
Um, they have it in order, probably. Not. No, it's fifty-three. Images I think it's somewhere. like in order uh, from eight to. I'm not going through that. All right. Uh, for me, I've talked about this before, and I'm definitely. Oh, I know. I think my game of the year is a shocker, Balatro. Right. I really like Balatro. See, I think that's a lot of people's game of the year. Yeah. I think that you got to try that game. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I really did like Echoes of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. I did not complete the game. I really liked um, UFO 50. I also yeah. did not play all of the games that are available in UFO 50, but I like both of those games. So all of those are kind of up there for game of the year, but Balatro has most of my attention. I play it like almost every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Uh, where we the poll is I think done already. Um, okay. oh no, it's gonna be done. Second. All right. It is done and it's linked. Sixty-eight okay. percent link and seventy-eight percent on YouTube. Okay, so link now. Final. Oh boy! This is for the president. The NBA finals. This is for the president. <laughs> yes. Of what are we doing? The with world, here? I guess. Pikachu versus Link. Okay. I can't believe Sonic or Mario didn't make it, yeah. or Solid Snake. I'm very upset with yeah. all of you. Yeah. But this is for the people. It's not about my biases. True. It's Pikachu versus Link. Yeah. I will put it. And you know what? Maybe we'll do this. No, I'll leave it the same amount. Okay. I was going to extend the time. Pikachu. Boom. All right. Go for it. And last from last week's Wolfden Live, uh, Go Forth uh, said, Mario Kart DS on the school bus in elementary school. Only one kid had to uh, own the cartridge, and everyone else who didn't even own the game were able to hop in and play a truly golden age of gaming. God, elementary school. I'll, my, my knees crack when I stand up. Thanks for reminding <laughs> me of that. Uh, wait. You all right? Oh, Mario Kart DS in elementary school. Yeah. yeah, that's weird. In elementary school, we were playing Pokemon. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's not really a thing you do anymore. It's no. Like sneak, sneak your handheld to school and play games on the bus. It sucks. Like, yeah. what are... it? Like, we used to bring the Game Boys to school. Yeah. Like, like what are kids doing now? Bringing their phones? Playing, uh, playing what? Yeah. That's another thing that, like, when I... Sometime, like, after high school, I was racking my... I wanted to make a mobile game. Yeah. That... Uh, utilized uh ad hoc uh wi-fi yeah. so that you could play games directly with other people like while you're in a room together the best game like th there's not a lot of games that are for the phone that mm -hmm. allow you to play with the people that are in the room with you uh locally yeah uh i think there's a lot of technical issues with the way that phones networks work these yeah, days yeah. like I, I don't think apple wants you, you to open up your like local connection yeah um there's a game called uh, No Breaks Valet, where yeah, yeah. it's like you can play that with two people like on the same phone. Yeah. Like, you just hold the other side of the phone. Um, but yeah, there's not like we used to have a lot of good experiences bringing the Game Boy together and linking them all together. And uh, there's nothing like that. Anymore. Also, too, like think about it, like the Game Boy was small, mm -hmm. like it was easily pocketable, it was easily hideable. You know, because you're not supposed to bring your Game Boy to school. Like, teachers will take that shit away from you. But, like, the Switch is pretty big. It's got a big screen. Like, so you don't want to show that in your backpack in fear of it getting scratched up. Steam Deck is huge. The mm. uh, ROG Ally is huge. Like, all these systems are now are, like, very big. And they're very hard to, like, you know, port around. At least harder than they were back in the day. So yeah, it's nothing even, better than a DS. You yeah. just hold that thing up, put it right so, in your backpack. Like, pocket. is there anything even worth, like, bringing to school? Aside from like your phone, no, yeah, no, I guess, I guess you're right. So, I mean, the Switch has some cool multiplayer functionality, like Mario Party does yeah. some cool shit, but like, yeah, you're not gonna get anything like that these days. Yeah, I think I ended the vote too early on YouTube. Oh but, no, uh, so rigged. We're stopping the steal. <laughs> it looks like uh, the winner, the president, based on. A uh, popular vote mm -hmm. is Link, sixty nine percent on Twitch. <laughs> nice, and on YouTube it is sixty percent. So it was 
pretty obvious that it is going to be linked by yeah. popular vote. But you all know that the popular vote is not what determines the president. Correct. It's the Electoral College. Yes. And we do have the Electoral College right here. <laughs> and I'm so happy that Master Chief did not win. <laughs> because we got Smash Brothers ro loaded up go. right now. We're doing level 8 CPUs. We got... <laughs> what? Who is it? Pikachu? Pikachu and Link. Pikachu. And now which Link? Hmm. Gonna, adult, like no, he's got to be, he's got to be an adult, right? He's got to be because kids can't run for president. That's a good point. Yeah, although he's still too young, but we're gonna just yeah. look past that. Where is he? <laughs> it's too many characters in it's that too game. Too many characters. Where? Oh, he's at the beginning because he's one of the original characters. Yeah. All right, three stocks, ten minute time limit. There you go. There you go. Level eight CPU. Let's figure it out while we talk to you people. Yeah. Uh, let me lower the brightness on this thing. Those ones. All right. Oh, shit. I hit the home button. Oh, no. All right. We're now going to be in the chat while this goes yes. on. Uh, and I'm going to leave that up while we talk. Um, Edward Bova. Bob, what is yours opinion? Oh, Nintendo Switch Online data miner discovers 4K resolution options and support for mesh shaders. Uh, Will, what is your opinion on the recent comic book movie Flop? Directed by Robert Zemeckis. Oh, that's right. That is based on a comic book. What, what is that? What are they uh, talking about? I don't even know how to describe it. Um, the movie here, by, directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Tom Hanks and Robin Wright. Uh, that it, uh, God, this is such a weird movie. It's about like a family over like and their experiences over like extended period of time, like over like decades. Mm -hmm. It's filmed in one like scene like a play, like one room and Tom Hanks and Robin Wright play the same characters over a period of like, you know, 40 or 50 years. And like, so that means like from when they're in their twenties to like when they're like old people and like, you know, Tom Hanks is already an old person. So like they're CGIing him like throughout the decade. Oh, I did hear him on a talk show talking about how they had to like pin his ears back. Yeah. Or something. So like, I don't know, man, Robert Zemeckis, uh has just he's been a very weird cat recently like all of his movies is just weird tech demos i didn't know he was still making movies yeah oh yeah <laughs> no he, he's it's just been like weird tech demos that are like i don't like it, this is not the guy who made back to the future anymore <laughs> you know um regarding the nintendo switch online play test apparently data miners found something in the code about uh them having mesh shaders and 4k resolution which is something that the nintendo switch is not capable of right uh yeah it's a switch two thing it sounds like for up to 4k resolutions to me mm -hmm. i mean it's probably a switch two thing but to me it sounds like they're just probably using a real engine or something yeah and like it just happens to happen because like let's say the nintendo switch 2 goes up to 1440 mm -hmm. it'll probably be 4k because yeah. that's just the number people want to hit mm -hmm. but if it does up to 1440p it's easier to just have games have the yeah. capability of 4k and then just run them at 100 yeah uh, 1440p you know um but yeah i i think it was pretty obvious that the play tests was something that will be a lot later down the line when yeah. the Nintendo Switch 2 comes out. Uh, I remember when uh, Mass Effect 1 came out, there was code in it for like PS3 data, even though it was an Xbox 360 exclusive. But that was only because the game ran on Unreal Engine. And Unreal Engine like has PS3 code in it, you know, in addition to the 360 code because it's a cross-platform engine. Yeah. So like just because like you see information in like the data doesn't necessarily mean like that's what, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's just that that's what they're in the engine that they're working in. So, uh, it's pretty neck and neck. I don't know. It's not. Oh, now it's exactly neck and neck. Oh boy. Uh, Link is at 27%. Uh, but they both got one stock. You could use zero. Is anybody's game here? Pretty much. Oh, and they're back to even. Oh boy. Link's getting a lot of percentage right now. Uh, who won the popular? Link did. Link did. Link did. Yeah. So, oh, shit. now Pikachu is light. So he yes. can take a lot of damage. And uh, I almost called him. Oh, oh Link fake fan. Can do, you know, Zelda should be the one who's competing right now. Yeah, Zelda she's an act actual, she's actual government official. Yeah. Uh, Link could end this in one up smash. Up. Yeah. And up air. Up. Can he get one good heavy hit? These are both level eight CPU. Yeah. Ooh, that would have been Ooh. almost the end there. 
Oh, this is oh. over. Oh, it's not oh. over. Oh, Pikachu got him. Pikachu's ledge guarding. This is a CPU. Oh, now Pikachu's on. Pikachu's guarding the stage. Okay, wait. Oh man, this is too intense. I gotta get off Twitter. I can't keep watching this. <laughs> it's so close. Yeah. The race is so and Pikachu ledge guarding again. And I think Pikachu cocked him. Pikachu cocked him. Oh man. Pikachu wins. This is like 2016 all over again. Yeah. Popular vote doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Electoral college calls it. Yeah. And Pikachu wins for president video game president of America. There you go. And I can't. Fucking switch back to the <laughs> other goddamn. There we go. Hi, everybody. Hey. Isn't that disappointing? Yes. Life sucks. What you guys voted for, the popular vote, yeah. doesn't matter. Too bad. You'll never be able to afford a house. You'll never be able to retire. True. All Maz in the YouTube chat says, Bob, last week you talked about Bazite and how it doesn't really improve performance on games. I've had a different experience where games run better and even allows me to play games that crash on Windows. I haven't had anything that plays for me that doesn't play on Windows. Uh, I will say the overall experience is definitely smoother. I definitely appreciate how it compiles the shaders before you enter the game. That's something that I wish Windows would at least give you the option to do. Um, and that makes things run a lot smoother. So I don't want to say that things don't run better on... Ba the reason why, I, why I'm like this is because things don't run that much better on Bazite. Right. I do think things run maybe marginally better, but not enough that is worth switching over to from Windows to Bazite uh, for purely performance sake but uh it is very nice and i don't regret mm -hmm. uh installing it and playing most of my games over there uh is it holy lettuce who says bob one of the things i see is that is what is on the tv on the table during the podcast have you thought about putting the gamecube demo version on it the one with the 128 marios running is that a thing you can acquire yeah, I didn't. Know I have never get, considered I did that because I didn't get, know that was a thing yeah. you could acquire. Is that for real? Uh, for context, um, there was a GameCube demo called Mario One Twenty Eight where they just had one hundred twenty eight Mario's running around a circle uh, to show off all the all the things the GameCube can do. Uh, never released as an actual game, but a very popular Space World demo. I mean, maybe it leaked somewhere. This is a hacked Wii, so we could put whatever yeah. we want on it. So I don't know. We have the Everybody Votes channel on right yeah. now. I, we, I didn't mention this yet, uh, but we have the Everybody Votes channel, and the and it's got me and Will <laughs> on it. Our 2008 versions of ourselves. Yes, uh, pre-beards. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing that was voted on, I guess maybe I voted on this. I feel like I used to log in like every week. To I vote. think you did, yeah. Um, the last thing was, uh, what's this say? Are you doing anything to counter global warming? And I think I voted yes. Now, what the fuck did I do yeah. to counter global warming? <laughs> I don't think I did. 18-year-old me did jack all. I yeah. think somebody on Twitter said, maybe you recycled. And I was like, well, I did used to return bottles all yeah. the time. Because I, like, I wanted the 10 cents. Yeah. I mean, this is a good investment. I used to make like 10 bucks. Yeah. Like every other week yeah. doing that. And that was enough to get Panda Express at the mall. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, and that, so this, I looked up the list of questions that mm -hmm. the Everybody Votes channel has. This yeah. is a worldwide poll from May of 2008. And that's the last poll that's they did? That's the last poll that okay. we did. Okay. There were a lot more that happened after that. Was this voting something from the Wii? I don't remember. Yes, it was called the Everybody Votes channel. Yeah. It was a whole channel. It was a Wii menu channel that something. allowed users to vote on simple opinion polls and compare and contrast opinions with those of friends, family, and voters around the world. Uh, ended support for it on June 28th, 2013. Hey, Bob. Did you hear about the Switch sequel getting backwards compatibility with Switch games? Yes, we yes, talked, we about, talked it. about it. Uh, yeah, we did. Can you believe that the CPU link was trying to like fucking 
uh, up smash, up B. He was like doing combos. And I shit. mean, look, it they, didn't work. They have to have some amazing data center where they just collect all player moves and like outcomes. The best smash player in the world is Sakurai, mm-hmm. and he it just it's just. It's just him yeah. like, training all of the CPUs. Uh, okay. What else? Uh, oh if we don't own video games anymore, is piracy still stealing? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that that logic is just a fun little thing to yes. theorize on. But, I mean, remember, not all crime is immoral yeah uh, that i that i agree with yes keep that in mind depending on how tomorrow shapes up legality (laughs) is mostly black and white yes mostly either legal or illegal right and a lot of the judicial system is arguing whether or not it's legal or illegal right and how how illegal it is yeah um piracy it's illegal yeah but you know morality is a little more gray Hey, I jaywalk all the time. Yeah. Jaywalking's legal in New York now. They passed oh, it, legislation that was like, no, you can just straight up walk across the street. <laughs> Which, like, is fine. Like, people do it all the time I anyway. Maybe I want to get hit by a car. Yeah. Well, the thing is that, like, in Manhattan, cars shouldn't be driving that fast anyway. Right. Because you're yeah. there's a, every two feet is a block. Yeah. You know, there's going to be an intersection. Mm-hmm. So you can't be driving that fast. Yeah. I can do crimes. You know what? Yeah. We're endorsing We're, your crimes. Nobody's today. stopping you. Hmm. Uh, never forget Toby Fox beat Sakurai more than half the time unless they ran. I don't remember that at all. I mean, either. Kobe Fox. Undertale. The Undertale guy. Yeah. What's he doing playing Sakurai? Yeah. <laughs> shouldn't he be making Delta Rune? Yeah. Shouldn't he be working? Yeah. Get to work. Lazy, You're not allowed to have a leisure time. Lazy bum. If Link had been trained to bomb recover, it would have been an easy win. Link is, the CPU Link is definitely trained to bomb recover. Yeah. It has done it to me. Multiple times, but that was only a level eight CPU. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they reserved that for the level nine. Um, I think we're done. I think that's everything, right. guys. What a wild episode this was! Crazy. We did so much. We did. Uh, and thank you for thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at eight PM Eastern, right here on twitchtv slash Den and youtubecom slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all. We always put the archive version up over on youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast so you can go check us out over there on demand whenever Com you want. Podcast so you ah. can go check us out over there. Sorry. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us though, we, uh, you can do that as well because we're also on audio podcast on every and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com, Pocket Cast. The list goes on. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Yeah, I gotta work on a video that'll hopefully be out on Thursday. It's on the PAL Kitty RGB 20 Pro. Uh, I will hopefully be streaming on Thursday as well. I have no idea when I'm gonna stream. Uh, and that's way the trouble. Why don't you go watch AJ? Uh, we always. Mm-hmm. Who else we gotta Nobody. Nobody. Uh, and I'll see y'all on Thursday. Bye. Bye.